Hello, welcome to Canyon Community Yoga. Thank you for joining us. Um, we've been having some technical difficulties tonight, so um, thank you for just hanging in there and, and bearing with us as we figure out uh, technology and, and uh, poor Wi-Fi signals and all of that. Um, so we're going to do a slow flow tonight. We'll work on warming the body up a little bit. Um, just starting in mountain. So you can come to the top of your mat or your towel or your blanket, whatever you have. And it's, it's not as simple of a standing pose as you might think. So if you're um, unfamiliar with mountain, it's actually a very um, stabilizing pose, a strengthening pose. Um, so we're going to start by lifting the toes up off the mat and setting one toe down at a time. Well, starting with the big toe. Set the big toes down and you're going to feel the inner thighs start to engage here and then bring the toes down to rest. We want to keep the inner thighs engaged so we start with the feet directly um, below the hip bones, making that parallel line with the bones. We want to feel the front of the legs a little bit engaged as well as the inner thighs. We're going to soften the tailbone down so we start to feel the lower abdomen engage. And then roll the shoulders back and down. Maybe that allows the palms to face forward or even turn away from you a bit with the thumbs pointing more toward the back of the room. And we tend to over arch our back a little bit when we draw the shoulders back and down. So we just want to correct that by knitting the ribs together. So now we're going to feel the lower and upper abdomen engage. And then draw the ears in line with the shoulders. This will just take the, the strain off the cervical spine, allowing the head to be properly held with no extra strain or injury. And once you find that place, maybe you keep your arms down by your sides. Maybe you just bring them to prayer for a moment. And begin to notice your breath. Maybe prayer hands are at heart center and thumbs might press in to your heart space, noticing the heartbeat. So notice that natural depth and pace of your breath. And depending on how much stress you've had throughout your day, you may find your breath feels shallow and short. So whenever you're ready, just begin to lengthen the breath, allowing the belly to be soft on the inhale, filling the lungs from bottom to top. Maybe you hold for a moment the top of your inhale. Exhale. Nice and long and slow. So feel free to exhale through the mouth or the nose. Through the nose will warm the body, through the mouth will cool it down. Just noticing where you might feel tension. The breath is the only requirement of your practice today. So if that's all you do today, that's fine. Maybe you'd prefer to just lay on your back and do some deep breathing to help calm and relax the body, and that is perfectly acceptable. 
I'm going to just give you some options of movement and you can take or leave them based on what feels right for your body. Anytime you're feeling pain, make sure to come out of a posture. Um, and that could just mean your body isn't ready for that posture or tonight your body is not feeling it. Um, there's a myriad of reasons. So just um, focus more on the breath, focus on your personal experience in each posture, and we will work our way through the practice, um, just easing into what serves you and backing away from what does not. So continuing that deep breath. If it feels safe to close your eyes, feel free to do so. Just noticing the spaces in the body that come in contact with the mat, with the earth. Feeling stable and strong in your body. Deep breath, inhaling fresh oxygen into the body. Healing, nourishing, cleansing breath. And even just reflecting on our current weather, getting these snowstorms and rainstorms Spring has begun. On the days that are clear, you get to see the plants starting to sprout up from beneath all the dead winter on the earth, the dead winter um, plants and coming up through the melting snow. new life sprouting up. Nice picture, I think, for this um, tumultuous season that we're in with so many unknowns. Um, the whole world, the whole globe in this time of um, just upheaval and unpredictability. But the seasons change and with them comes, with the spring comes that new life. And so maybe for you that is um, a good focus for your practice tonight, just thinking about that new life springing up from this time. I've heard of this season um, referred to as a spontaneous Sabbath and Sabbath is an ancient Hebrew um, practice from Jewish faith. Um, and the word Sabbath really means this, not just rest, but delight and um, reflection. And so maybe you haven't seen this season that way yet, but maybe that is something you can explore a little bit throughout your practice. Like how could this time bring in maybe a little bit more rest and reflection and delight for you. So with your next inhale, if you're ready, you can reach your arms overhead. And with your exhale, we're gonna fold forward. Make sure you keep the ball of the foot firmly planted as you come down into a forward fold. Maybe you bring a little bit of a bend into the knees so the hands can come to the mat. Placing the hands outside the feet on the earth. Stepping the feet back. From here, you can either just hang out in downward facing or if you're ready for some movement, shift forward into plank. Keeping all the alignment, softening the tailbone down, rolling the shoulders back and down. Knit the ribs in, ears in line with the shoulders. 
lower down in your time. If you know Chaturanga and it's in your practice, feel free to do that. I'm gonna come down knees, then the torso hugging the elbows in toward the ribs, coming up to cobra. So tops of the feet are flat on the mat, still softening the tailbone down, rolling the shoulders back and down, knitting the ribs in and really focusing on that sensation in the upper abdomen as you tuck the toes. We really want to knit the ribs together. That's lifting into the mid back is what it's doing. Tuck the toes down here facing. Maybe walk the feet out here for a moment. Stepping the feet toward the hands till you find yourself in a forward fold. Inhale, look up halfway, lengthening the spine. Exhale into your fold. Maybe the hands rest behind the thighs or the calves or under the toes. You can shake your head no and yes here, just letting gravity release some of that neck tension with your breath. Bending the knees nice and deep. Inhale, slowly coming back up to mountain. Hands come to prayer. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold, hands to the mat. Step back to plank or downward facing if you'd like to skip your vinyasa. Lower down your way. Cobra. Next inhale, tuck the toes, knit the ribs together to lift through that mid back space into downward facing. Stepping forward, inhale, look up, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, mountain pose. One more time, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward fold. Hands to the mat, maybe a bend in the knees, get them there, step back. Vinyasa through or hang out and downward facing if that's your preference. Maybe hang out one extra breath here in Cobra. Then tuck the toes, inhale, lift through the mid back. Downward facing. Stepping forward, inhale, mountain. Next inhale, sitting back in chair pose. So make sure you can see your toes. Make sure the four corners of the feet are firmly rooted into the mat. Softening the tailbone down, roll the shoulders back and down. Knit the ribs in, ears above the shoulders. Next inhale, forward fold, hands to the mat. Step back, plank. Lower down your way. Cobra. Inhale, tuck the toes, knit the ribs in, lift up, downward facing. Right leg comes up, bend the knee, hug it in tight toward the belly. Shift your weight forward, like you're coming into plank. Lift high through the mid back to step that right foot down. Turning the left foot out 45 degrees. Right knee is bent toward the pinky toe. Outside of the left foot pressing into the mat. 
feeling that inner left thigh engage so it can start to draw the left hip forward ever so slightly. Feel that outer right thigh and glute engage to draw that right hip back just a bit. Begin to lift up just enough to get your fingertips off the earth. So you really feel that front leg engaging here. Inhale, slowly coming up to warrior one. Exhale, sink into that posture. So hang out here for another couple breaths just so you can really feel the sensation. So we want to have this, this strengthening sensation and balancing sensation in the front leg here. Keeping that outer thigh and glute working. Make sure the knee does not go any further forward than the ankle. The left inner thigh is engaged, outer edge of the left foot pressing into the mat. That just keeps our weight evenly distributed. It's a space that tends to come up and our foot rolls inward. So arms coming up, shoulders roll back in down. Make sure you're still knitting the ribs together so we're not overarching the back here. Inhale, reach the arms back, opposite hand, opposite elbow, forward fold in the humble warrior. And as you're keeping the tailbone softened down, you should feel the glutes working here. Maybe you bring the left hand down to the earth, maybe not, just an option. If you do, maybe you reach the right arm up, stacking the shoulders. Inhale, right hand comes down. Step the left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, slowly coming up. Exhale, mountain. We're going to do the other side now. So inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, chair. Inhale, hands to the mat. Exhale, step back, plank, lower down. Cobra. Inhale here, knit the ribs together, tuck the toes, lift up. Exhale, downward facing. Left leg comes up. Bend the knee. Hug it in toward the torso. Nice and tight. Lifting through the mid back space by knitting the ribs together. Step the left foot down. Right foot turns out 45 degrees. Pressing into the mat with the outside of that right foot. Feel the inner right thigh engage, keeping that outside of the foot rooted into the mat. Left knee is bent toward the pinky toe. Make sure it stays above the ankle. Feel the outer glute and thigh engage. And just come up high enough to bring the fingertips off the earth. And inhale, slowly coming up to your warrior one. So as you have those thigh spaces engaged and foot spaces engaged, we're also still softening the tailbone down, rolling the shoulders back and down, knitting the ribs in, ears in line with shoulders. And if at any time having your arms lifted in warrior becomes strenuous. You can also just do prayer hands or cactus arms. So find what's working best for your body. Inhale, reaching the arms behind, opposite hand clasps, opposite elbow, forward fold, humble warrior. You can hang out right here or bring the right hand down to the earth. 
Left arm can stack the shoulders here, reaching it up. Inhale, left hand comes down, stepping forward. Next inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, slowly coming up. Exhale to mountain. We'll do one more vinyasa or you can just hang out in your downward facing. It's up to you. So inhale, reaching up. Exhale, fold, hands to the mat. Step back, downward facing or plank and vinyasa through. Inhale, cobra, exhale, downward facing. And taking a little rest, coming to the knees, tops of the feet flat, big toes touch. You can either spread the knees wide or draw them close together, sitting back on the heels. And allowing the top of the forehead to rest, stretching the arms forward or down by your sides. When you're ready, you can inhale, shifting to tabletop. Stepping the right foot forward toward the right hand. And make sure that the left knee is further behind the left hip. We don't want it directly underneath. We want to keep the right knee above the ankle here. So if it's available to you, left arm is our left hand is down, right arm reaches up, stacking the shoulders. Maybe you stay right here. Maybe you tuck the left toes and lift that left knee up off the earth. And either with the knee up or down, your choice, working on balance here a little bit. We're gonna make sure the tailbone is still softened. We're still engaging the outer right thigh and glute. And with that um, left heel up off the mat, we're gonna bring the heel high so the ankle is above the ball of the foot. Inner left thigh engaged. So either staying here or bringing the knee to the mat, your choice. And if it's in your practice, you can slowly Tick tock the arms parallel to the earth, gazing to the right and a twist here. Inhale, bringing the arms forward. Exhale, step the left foot forward to meet the right mountain pose. So maybe you do prayer hands here. Taking a few deep breaths, just allowing yourself to once in check in with the breath. We don't want to be chasing the breath in our practice, but we want to be allowing the breath to lead us through the movements. So just noticing your breath once again, maybe taking some time to think about your posture and mountain as well. The feet are directly below the hips so that there's a nice parallel line in your skeletal body here from the hips to the earth. Lifting the toes to feel the four corners of the feet ground into the earth, setting the big toe down first to feel that inner thigh engage and then set the rest of them down. Keep the inner thighs working here. Softening the tailbone down, rolling shoulders back and down, knit the ribs in, ears in line with the shoulders.
few more deep breaths. Maybe just reflecting on this season of spring once again. Like you're inhaling that fresh, clean air that comes after a rain. Exhaling out the toxic stress. Just allowing the lungs to fill with that new breath of life. When you're ready, we can move into the next leg. So we'll vinyasa first if you're feeling it tonight. Otherwise, just come to downward facing. No shame in that. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold, hands to the mat. Step back, plank, lower down. Inhale, cobra, tuck the toes. Knit the ribs together, exhale, lifting up, downward facing. Bringing the knees to the mat, stepping the left foot forward toward the left hand. You might need to move the left hand out of the way and then set it back down. So once again, we're making sure the right knee is behind the right hip, not directly beneath it. Should be getting a little bit of a hip flexor stretch here. Make sure that left knee is just above the ankle, no further forward. And as we start to engage muscle groups here, so we'll start with that outer left glute and thigh. That's gonna get our, our um, hip alignment. Maybe you keep that Right knee down, maybe lift it up. Keeping the inner right thigh engaged, keeping the left, I'm sorry, the right ankle high above the ball of the foot. Stacking shoulders here, lifting that left arm up toward the ceiling. So remember this, Posture is um, just one option. You can also do this with your right knee on the mat. Just see what feels best for you. But make sure you're really feeling the, the outer thigh and the glute working on this left leg, the inner right thigh working, and begin to tick-tock the arms up par parallel to the mat in your twist. So here the right arm is forward, the left arm is back. Still keeping that inner right thigh working. Inhale, turning the torso toward the top of the mat for crescent. Step forward to mountain. Exhale, hands at heart center. Inhale, sitting back, chair pose. Next inhale, hands to the mat. Step back to bring the knees down. Take a rest in child's pose. Knees either together or apart, your choice. Keep the tailbone low as you drop the head gently toward the earth. Top of the forehead, gently pressing either into the mat or if you have a pillow or a blanket or a block, that can really help. We want to keep our tailbone low, but if our hips are tight, oftentimes it starts to just lift up when we try to bring our head down. So it's better to elevate the head. We say it's like bringing the earth up to meet you instead of trying to force the body into something that's not quite feeling. So take a few deep breaths and just rest in your child's pose for a moment. See how we're doing on time here. So if you are 
done with warming your body tonight, feel free to just rest a little bit longer. Otherwise, I'm going to move us through a few more um, sun salutations. So go ahead and bring the hands to the mat if you're ready for that tonight. Tucking the toes, inhale, knees come up, downward facing. Go ahead and walk the dog, as we say, bending one knee at a time, looking back at your toes. Maybe on your next inhale, you just lift the heels nice and high so you're on the ball of each foot. Exhale, let them come back down. So keep your gaze toward your toes and continue to do that just a few more times. Last time, inhale, exhale, set them down. Right leg comes up, bend the knee, hug it nice and tight, shift the weight forward, lifting into the mid-back by knitting the ribs together, and step the right foot down. Turn that left foot out 45 degrees, finding our footing, finding our engagement and our leg muscles, just bringing the fingertips up a little bit off the earth. Really want to feel the legs before we come up. We don't just want to swing ourselves up. We want to make sure the muscles are already working so we can come up safely. Inhale, arms reach back, opposite hand, opposite elbow. Exhale, forward fold, humble warrior. Inhale, left hand down, right arm up. Exhale, right hand comes down, step forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, slowly coming up. Exhale, mountain hands come to heart center in prayer. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold, hands to the mat, step back, lower down from plank, cobra. Inhale, tuck the toes, lift through the mid back, downward facing. Left leg up. Bend the knee, hug it in nice and tight, shifting forward, step the left foot down toward the left hand. Right foot turns out 45 degrees. Outside of that right foot, pressing into the mat, all four corners of each foot is firmly rooted. Outside of the left, Hip and glute are engaged, knee above the ankle. Inner right thigh turns on to draw that right hip forward. Inhale, coming up just high enough to bring the fingertips off the earth. Feel that left glute working and then slowly come up to warrior one. Another breath here. Just allowing yourself to sink into it, thinking about your alignment in your spine as well. We talk about softening the tailbone down, right? Rolling the shoulders back and down, knitting the ribs in, ears above the shoulders. Inhale, reach the arms back, opposite hand, opposite elbow behind the back. Exhale into your humble warrior. Inhale, right hand comes down, left arm up. Left hand comes down. Step the right foot forward to meet the left. 
Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, inhale all the way up. Exhale, mountain. Next, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold, hands to the mat. Stepping back to downward facing. Right leg comes up, bend the knee, hug it in nice and tight, shift the weight forward. Step the right foot down toward the right hand. This time, bring the left knee down to the mat, even if you weren't doing that before. Left hand down inside the right arch, right arm up, stack the shoulders here, keeping that right knee above the ankle. Inhale, bring the right hand down inside the right arch. So maybe this is your posture. Maybe you need a block or blanket or something under the hands. That's always an option. Just coming into lizard pose. So we still want to be softening the tailbone down, rolling the shoulders back, knitting the ribs in and ears above the shoulders. Maybe you start to let that right knee open toward the right side, shifting onto the outside of the right foot. If that's available to you, make sure the four corners of the palms are pressing in. Staying here, or if you need to go deeper, maybe you come down to the forearms. Inhale, draw the knee back to center. Walk the hands in if you were on your forearms. Bring the right hand outside the right foot. So we're in our low lunge here with our hands on the earth. We're gonna inhale here, exhale, shift the weight back toward the left heel, keeping the toes tucked on that left foot. Let me see if you prefer to point or flex the front leg or front foot. Just honoring that right knee. Careful not to hyperextend here. Inhale, shifting forward, low lunge. Exhale, back half splits. So if you do tend to hyperextend, it would probably feel better for your body to flex that right foot, drawing the toes back toward you. Just notice what you need tonight. Inhale, coming forward. Lifting the left knee up. And we're going to, if you need to adjust the hands forward a little bit, feel free to do that. Make sure you're lifting high through the mid back so you can step the right foot back without dragging it on your Back to downward facing. Left leg comes up. Bend the knee, hug it in nice and tight toward the torso. Lifting high through the mid back so you can set that left foot down again without dragging. Right knee comes to the earth. Make sure that left knee stays above the ankle or behind, but no further forward. Inhale with the right palm planted, left arm reaches up. Stacking shoulders. Next breath, bring that left hand down inside the left arch. So checking in once again with the alignment of that left leg. Keeping the knee above the ankle. Feeling that outer glute and thigh working. Untucking the toes on the right foot. Allow the top of the right foot to rest flat. This might be your lizard, and that is fine. Maybe finding a prop to go under the hands if necessary. 
You can maybe start to open the knee a little further if that's available to you, bringing just the outer edge of the foot to the mat, lifting the inner, inner edge of the foot. So make sure you're still softening the tailbone down and rolling the shoulders back and down, knitting the ribs in to protect the spine here. Ears in line with shoulders. Stay here, or if you have it in your practice, you can come down to the forearms. Feeling the top of that right foot pressing into the mat, especially with the pinky toe. Next inhale, draw the knee back to center. Walk the hands back in if you're on your forearms. Tuck the toes on the right foot. Bring that left hand outside the left foot. I think I said that backwards, but on the back foot, you're tucking the toes. <laughs> Inhale here, exhale, shift the weight back toward the right heel, flexing the left foot if you tend to hyperextend. Otherwise, just finding what feels best to you and just rocking forward and back. Inhale forward, low lunge, exhale back. Half splits. Follow your breath. Inhale forward, step that left foot back to meet the right. Bring yourself down onto your belly. Resting either cheek and letting the arms come down by your sides, palms to the mat. Maybe bending the knees here and just windshield wiping the legs side to side. Just resting either cheek. Switching cheeks. And allowing the legs to extend and rest when you're ready. Tops of the feet flat. Again, resting either cheek against the mat. Continuing to breathe deep and just noticing the spaces in your body that come in contact with the mat here. So lots of spaces, right? Take a little mental inventory of all those places. Checking in with the breath, making sure it's still slow and deep. So if you would like, you can just stay right where you are. You might feel like this is your final resting pose for the night. But if you're ready to move on from that, just bring the hands even with the heart, hug the elbows into the rib cage, tuck the toes. And like we're coming up from Cobra, you're gonna inhale, knit the ribs together, lift through the mid back onto your knees and then slowly come to seated. So for seated, it can be whatever it needs to be in your body. Maybe it's ankles crossed. Maybe it's sitting back on heels. Maybe you have a blanket under the tailbone with ankles crossed or uh, behind the knees in this seated posture here. So just see what feels best to you in your body. And with your next inhale, bring the left hand outside the right thigh. 
The right palm can plant either to your right on the earth or a block or behind the tailbone. So your choice. And we're going to make sure to root down through the left hip, really bringing it low, drawing it back. It's like someone is pressing this left thigh away and down. So you can get a little bit of a stretch here in that left hip flexor. And with your next inhale, twisting first to the right at the waist, then the heart, then the neck. Inhale to center, exhale, right hand outside the left thigh, root down through the right hip. This leg is drawing down toward the earth. Then a gentle twist to the left, first at the waist, then the heart, then the neck. Keep the shoulders back and down, but knit the ribs in to protect the back. Inhale to center. Placing the feet in front of the hips to slowly bring yourself down onto your back. With the feet in front of the hips and the knees bent, arms come down by your sides, palms to the earth, four corners of the palms pressing firmly into the earth, allowing the shoulder blades to wrap around the spine so they lay flat. Lifting the chin ever so slightly, make sure the knees are directly above the hips and with your inhale, press through the heels to lift the hips up, bridge pose. <sighs> Hanging out here for a couple breaths. Maybe you clasp the hands together under the low back and draw the shoulder blades a little closer together around the spine. Inhale, release the hands. Exhale, let the spine lower one vertebrae at a time to the mat. Drawing the knees in, hands on the shins. Give yourself a hug. Feel the back getting a little bit of a stretch. Excuse me. Next inhale, maybe you let the soles of the feet touch and the knees open. So here, depending on your body, you might find some space in the lower leg to just rest the hands, or maybe the hands can clasp around the feet. We're pressing the four corners of the feet firmly into each other and engaging the outer thighs and glutes to open the knees away from you. Still keeping the soles of the feet firmly pressed. Next inhale, we can begin to open the legs to happy baby. So if the hips are already nice and open, maybe you're going to place the hands inside the arches of the feet and begin to let the heels come up toward the ceiling. So this is one option. If the hips are tight though, that means the tailbone tends to start to lift off the earth. So we really do want to keep the tailbone and shoulders resting on the earth in this posture. So you can bring your hands outside of the thighs, plant them behind the thighs here. It's just another option. So notice how this feels in your inner thigh space. If it's pinching or painful at all, you might just have your knees spread too wide so you can bring them closer together. Next inhale, bring the hands inside the thighs, extending the legs and opening to a wide V, but only as wide as feels good for your body. Maybe rotate the ankles here a little bit. And reverse. 
then bending the knees, hands come in front of the shins, rocking side to side, just massaging the low back on the mat, on the earth. Back to center. Feet come in front of the hips, walking them to the outer edges of the mat, letting the arms release here, either out in a T if you have room, palms to the earth, or if you're short on space, you can always cactus the arms, just bending at the elbows. This will make the, the palms face up. And from here, letting the knees fall toward the right as you gaze over your left, arm. So if you do have plenty of room, maybe just play with this um, arm positioning and see if one way feels like more of a stretch for you, either the arms extended or you know, cactus gets a little bit different space in the pectoral area. If you still feel like you need more out of the stretch, you can place your right ankle on your left thigh. And if it's available for you, you can be gazing over your left arm, maybe you're even lifting your head a little bit as you turn it to get a little bit deeper turn. But just going into your body's fullest expression of the posture, which means no pain, no strain. So stay there as long as you'd like, or you can inhale the knees back to center, exhale other way, knees go left. Maybe you're gazing right if that works for you. Maybe the left ankle sets on the right thigh here. Might be feeling a nice little hip flexor stretch. Nice deep full belly breaths here. Inhale to center in your own time. Take any other stretches that your body might need before you ease yourself into your final resting posture of choice. So maybe that means Shavasana, just laying on your back with your arms straight down by your sides. Maybe you stay here or place your arms in a different spot out in a T or half moon around your head or just resting on your belly. Maybe a modified Shavasana for you means knees bent and touching at center, the feet walking away or even the soles of the feet touching and the knees open to butterfly. So choosing your resting posture, maybe you prefer child's pose or fetal pose or laying on your belly. So many options. Just find that space. Continuing a deep yoga breath. Filling the belly. Nice, slow exhale. Notice as you sink into this resting posture with each exhale, you feel a little bit more tension leaving the body. It's melting into your mat.
Or maybe you're bringing your mind's eye back to our impending season of spring on its way. Breathing in that fresh spring air, cleansed by the rain, bringing new life all around. And maybe just reflecting once again on that phrase of spontaneous Sabbath, whether you're a spiritual person or not. The Sabbath can still be implemented, just remembering what it can stand for. It can be a time of rest, reflection, even delight and play. Maybe just pondering those different aspects and thinking about what you can invite into your life. Maybe you're inviting it in visually, even with your inhale. And thinking about the specific things you might be able to do in this spontaneous Sabbath season that are life-giving, that allow you to pause allow you to rest, will allow you to play and just delight in the present. So rest comes from the word restoration. The rest allows the body to restore and heal. And so Sabbath season can be a healing season. And in light of that, I invite you to stay in your resting pose tonight. Allowing yourself a few more moments of stillness. Maybe the breath is starting to return to its natural rhythm. The striving ceases and the body rests. The mind follows. So I'm going to allow you to just stay here tonight. I thank you so much for practicing with me. The immeasurable beauty and worth in me sees and is grateful for the immeasurable worth and beauty in you joining me tonight. Namaste. Feel free to just lay there a little longer as I end our video.